Welcome to Brampton Focus. Well, after completing 56 shows, a debate, and some election stuff in our first season, Brampton Focus is back for a second season. We thank the Peel region and the people of Brampton for inviting us into your homes and onto your computer. Now, what better topic should we uh, start our second season off with than going back to school? My name is Michael A. Charbon. And when we return, we will meet a Peel regional police officer talking about safety. We're going to talk about getting our kids to excel. What about tutoring as an option and keeping them busy after school, physical activity with cheerleading, right here on Brampton Focus. Welcome to our first show of the second season of Brampton Focus. My name is Michael Lloyd Charbonne. On behalf of all our team at Brampton Focus, thank you so much for tuning in. Last year we did over 56 shows, so we're very happy to be back in front of you again. And obviously, it's September. What is happening? Uh, well, most people are going back to work if you were on holidays. But more important, the little kids are going back to school. So we wanted to do a back to school special. Now, one of the things when either you're sending your child to school for the very first time, or they're going to grade eight, or they're going to high school or mid school, you always worry about safety. So who better to talk about safety and going back to school than Peel's finest, Peel Regional Police. Uh, please uh, welcome my guest, Constable Michelle Vivian. Uh, Michelle, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, one of the things that uh, people think about is safety. Now, when you talk about going back to school and safety, there's basically three things. We talk about prep, walk, and drive. So from a safety standpoint, uh, standpoint um, how do we prep our kids to go back to school? I think um, I think it's important for parents to um, have their children uh, know actually their first name and their last name. It's important for that and how to spell it. Um, they need to know what their addresses are. Um, they need to know their routes to school and their routes back. Um, they need to understand that uh, when they're at school, um, uh, they're at school, not to leave school property. Even if that neighbor comes uh, along somewhere along the line and says, "Hey, you know, I can I can take you home," they're to stay at school and until they talk to their parents and or have their cell parents. Phone That's right. And mom and dad's cell phone number is a really important thing for them to know too. So to a child that may not, uh, who's too young, let us say, should you put it on a card? Should you put it in their backpack? Is that a dangerous thing or a good thing? Um, not visible, from, I'm saying. Yeah, not visible. From, uh, from that kind of a standpoint, I think uh, having that information inside their knapsack is a good thing. Um, I uh, certainly do... Uh, uh, want to say that uh, it's not a good thing to advertise children's names on their back of their backpacks, on their hats, on their t-shirts. Um, I'm not because a big it's fan like, of that. Hey, Wendy, how are you? That's and Wendy right. says, how does he know my name? Well, because he yes. read her yeah, name. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, another aspect is walk. Now, it sounds, I'm not talking about left foot, right foot. I'm talking <laughs> about uh, walking to school, walking to the bus, walking from school to the bus, and walking in general because traffic. What are some of the things we need to tell our kids and I think sometimes we think our kids know a lot about everything and and maybe uh, as a kid would be now knows more at their age than I did at that age yep. but I would say uh, in in lack of technological understanding I had more practical understanding but what are the things we need to tell them about walking I think um, uh, parents perhaps maybe uh, need to rethink their way to school um, we have a huge initiative on walking to school and it would be nice to see majority of, of children and parents walking uh, to school uh, it's a big um, a big initiative and uh, and it's a good way to get to school and it's a safe way to get to school as long as those pedestrians are following the pedestrian rules which are walking on sidewalks crossing at crosswalks and stopping and looking and listening um, at at every intersection prior to uh, and going into that intersection and crossing that roadway and the other added bonus is it's automatic exercise uh, I see so many parents uh, friends of mine who drive their kids yeah. to school just around um, the corner yeah and I mean we as parents it's okay we need the immediacy we need the mm -hmm. convenience but um, you know I mean how many times you heard oh I had a four a four hour walk to school with a hundred pound knapsack I mean we've all heard that <laughs> yeah, but it's very important right. isn't yeah. it? yeah yeah very important now the final component of uh, going back and in, in, in school and prepping is driving now one wouldn't think that we as grown-ups would have to consider that but there's also school buses 
person driving. What yeah. do we have to take into consideration? And also with increased traffic we have, that we have to communicate to our kids. Yes, um, when it comes to drivers, uh, we need to be aware of our surroundings. It's very important for uh, drivers to uh, get, stay off that cell phone, absolutely, and uh, pay attention to their, their mirrors and to pay attention to what's going on around them. Kids are darting in and out. They're excited to go back to school. They're excited to see their friends and they're going to be uh, all over the place. Unfortunately, they're not going to follow the rules uh, like we would like them to. And uh, drivers need to uh, understand that there is a speed zone in in um, uh, in the school zones, which is 40 kilometers. 40 kilometers, yep. If, uh, if they can go slower than that, that's even better, especially on those first couple of weeks of school where um, there it seems to be chaos. Everybody's uh, in panic mode. Uh, they're not getting to school on time. They're not getting to work on time. It's all a new routine for, for most people. And, uh, and so those kinds of things go by the wayside. And I think it's important for parents to actually pay attention to that kind of stuff, drivers. So uh, with about two minutes left, there's two things I want to cover. First of all, I want to cover bus patrol because a lot of kids are bust. Uh, but more importantly, and something dear to my heart, uh, I want you to talk about children having the confidence and the ability to reach out to police. Police are your friend. H yes. How do you make that pitch? How do you break that barrier? And what are some things that parents can do to contribute to that feeling of trust and understanding that a child in a time of need can reach out to a police mm -hmm. officer? Uh, one of our, actually one of our programs at the uh, Peel Children's Safety Village is our um, community program, our community helpers program, which uh, allows our grade ones to come in and actually have um, the opportunity to talk to us. We talk to them about uh, what we do, why we carry the equipment that we carry, mm -hmm. um, and it allows them to understand. We actually have them try on our vests, mm -hmm. and they get to see uh, firsthand, up close and personal, that pr probably their first initial uh, contact with police. Right. And that good feeling, I think, carries, carries with them. You you have, a, you have a huge challenge because there are certain uh, certain communities and groups where in their or originating country of origin, if one would say, uh, police were never held to the same high level of, of esteem and trust that, that we hold our Peel Regional Police to, and, and we, we love them. Uh, with, with, with about a minute left, uh, just quickly tell me in 30 seconds or so about your bus patrol program. Our bus patrol program, uh, we've been involved in for approximately... Uh, 19 years and uh, it is a program that we are partners with CAA and it is mm -hmm. where children are trained to be on the buses riding those buses in specific areas uh, right. in positions and they are the eyes and ears the second set of eyes the second set of ears for those drivers they're the ones that are seeing and hearing things that those bus drivers are not when it gets to school the bus uh, the bus stops these bus patrollers get out and they assist uh, with the um, disloading and the loading of children, yeah. and they also are trained in evacuations. That's great. Um, Constable Michelle Vivian from uh, Peel Regional Police, one of our community outreach officers. We appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about after school. What do you do to keep your kids interested? What should you do? Get them away from the computer, get them away from the television, get them involved in a sport or an activity. We're going to talk to someone with cheerleading. It's called Cheer Fusion, based here in Brampton. My name is Michael A. Charbon. You're watching the first program of our new season, season number two on Brampton Focus. We'll be back with more right after this. To our season opener it's back to school now you know one of the things you want to do is you want to keep your kids in an activity you want them to do something that is going to complement them uh, both physically mentally and challenge them there's nothing like a team sport and we have a team sport here we have uh, two lovely young ladies on my far right is lovely angelina dutois and she is a cheerleader and we have also got uh, janita bram who is the owner of cheer fusion in Brampton. Hello ladies, welcome to Brampton Focus. Hello, hello. Both of you are smiling. So Angelina, I'm gonna to go to you first. What's it like all summer waiting for school to start? Are you ready for school to start? Are you ready to get back into your cheerleading? Yes, there's a lot of competitions that I'm ready for, new experiences and team bonding. bondings. So what does cheerleading do that you think is gonna kind of complement you as a student in your learning? Is there something that cheerleading does that complements learning or complements going to school? Well, 
I mean, people think that cheerleading is not a sport, but I think it is because you can, like, do, like, you perform in front of, like, a thousand people. And it's challenging. There's yeah. acrobatics. You have to, you have to have skill. You have to have coordination. How long have you been uh, involved in cheerleading? Um, five years. Five years. And you still love it? Yes. Does it, does it, uh, does it hurt? Uh, your homework that uh, that you have to do or, or does do you think it gives you more strength it gives me more strength I have more time to do my homework that's great Janita you know it's it's a wonderful thing when you can put together a program that kids really really enjoy uh, and something that they can do to that's going to help them what are some of the attributes that you see as a byproduct of for instance cheerleading for them well cheerleading for them Angelina is right by the way most see it as not a sport it is a sport we do conditioning, strength training, we self-confidence, um, kids with self-esteem issues, we build that as well. A lot of community involvement. So it is a sport. We do teach them discipline. They learn a lot of life lessons from our sport. Now, some people would say it looks a little dangerous. Not every single child when they start out will be like that beautiful young lady who's being held up. But the point is, it's still about team and it's still about learning, right? Definitely. And we start from the ground up. So to learn the skills that you're seeing now, there's basics that are involved. Um, it takes a lot to get to that point. It's not something that we just decide we're going to toss that skill right off the bat. Now, your cheer fusion is based in Brampton. As we can see from some of the footage there, you have... Uh, trampolines, you have all kinds of facilities there to help them move along so they can reach that point where they can do backflips and all the rest of this <laughs> wonderful stuff. So that's cool. Definitely. You, you can do backflips and all that, Angelina? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Uh, where the heck do you, I guess you can't do that at home, no practicing at home, you hit the lights. Um, you can do it in your backyard, just you have to be careful. <laughs> so what's the most, what's, what's the most fun you've ever had cheerleading? Is it the competitions? Is it going to uh, regular uh, training sessions? Is it learning one thing that others can't do? What's, what's the best part of it? I think the competitions, because you got to perform in front of a lot of people. So once you get once you get used to that, I guess that builds your self confidence. How, how would you say uh, you were before you came? Do you, do you think you've changed positively? <laughs> yes, I was very shy and nervous. I didn't talk to anybody. I was and just... cheerleading brought you out yes. of that. See, here's a, a Janita. Here's a beautiful example of what organized sport. It doesn't matter what it is that the kids do. It doesn't matter what sports, whether it's soccer, whether it's hockey, whether it's dancing, whether it's cheerleading, anything to take them to another place and a team place because we don't want them hanging around the malls or just sitting downstairs and doing this all day. No. How, what do what some of your... Uh, some of your friends say, Angelina, are they jealous? Do they think it's, uh, it's something that they'd like to do? They just don't want to commit? What are your friends I think, think? they're jealous because they want to do this sport too. It's fun. You got to meet a, not, a lot of people. Yeah. It's the skills you've learned yeah. as well. Well, it's a skill, yeah. And there's also a commitment, too. Uh, how good are the kids in keeping the commitment? I mean, obviously, with young ladies of this age, they're not, they won't be driving themselves, that's all. <laughs> um, but, but how is it maintaining their interest in it and getting them to commit? We make the girls responsible, actually, for their time in the gym. So just to go back on the school note of it, um, we believe in if you're not up to par with your school, then really we need to have you sit on the side yeah. and do your homework, and then you can pop into training. Um, that just teach them discipline wise you need to finish your homework before coming to the gym. Um, commitment, that's not a problem. It's you have friends when you're coming there. Mm -hmm. So you're not coming to somewhere that's going to hurt you or have you bored. You're having fun and you're with your, your peers. Yeah. So the commitment is easier. Um, it's the skills. Learning the skills takes some time. Angelina, one last question for you with about a minute and a half to go. If there was a young lady who was watching this here or a mom who's considering, <laughs> what am I going to do with my kid uh, that's going to make her feel better about life? What would you say to them about what cheerleading, for instance, has done for your life? Um, it's help me a lot with learning new things and performing in front of everybody like not being nervous and shy I can like you know perform challenge challenge the challenge what grade are you going into uh, seven seven are you look oh you're just about <laughs> finished almost in high school are you looking forward to going back to school yes have you had enough of summer yes yeah. 
So you're looking forward to competition? Yes, I am. Good for you. Angelina Dutois, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you Thank for being you. here and dressing up so cute and pretty. <laughs> and we had your mom here. She was uh, with her iPad so proudly uh, walking about and taking pictures. So we appreciate it. Wish you all the best of luck. So with just about a minute left, um, uh, Janita, um, if someone wants to contact you, how would they get in contact with uh, Cheer Fusion? I would say take a look at our website. We're at cfacheer.com. So it's C-F-A-C-H-E-E-R dot com um, or they can always contact us you will see our phone number on the website as well yeah so um you run your school is, is it different ages different days of the week or is it uh, is it a standard x number of times a week or how would how would a schedule go for for a beginner it really depends so we have we start from age three and up um, they would train about once a week so ages three to six are in once a week uh, six to eight are in twice a week so it really depends on the team as well but we do start with ages three and up Perfect. I'd like to thank my uh, two guests, lovely Angelina Dutois, all dressed up and smiling, beaming like a button, and uh, Janita Brown, who is the owner of Cheer Fusion All-Stars. Uh, we encourage you to have your kid involved in some extracurricular activity because it only makes them stronger. Coming up next, uh, what about tutoring your kid? You know, there's one thing about sending your child to school. Maybe he or she is having problems. Maybe you want to make them a better student. Coming up next on our season opener and back to school special, we'll be talking about tutoring. My name is Michael A. Charval. I'm back with more right after this. Back to Brad to focus our final segment in this our first show back uh, the last season as we said it was 56 shows and we're so glad to be back here with you and of course the topic is it's about back to school now when you talk about back to school schooling learning does your child hit the grade does he or she need a bump up or do they need some help from the lower part to excel that's what our last topic here is about it's about tutoring I'm joined by Effet Aman and she owns a company called Kumin Math and Reading Effet thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having us. Um, tutoring is always one of those things that uh, people aren't sure of. Why tutoring? Why would tutoring be such a, a, a choice for some people? Well, I'm finding dealing with the parents that they're finding that the school system isn't, uh, it's pretty relaxed. And uh, and by having the enrolling in Kumon or having tutoring, it enhances their studies at school. So whether your child is doing well or a subpar or over, uh, something like a, a Kuman program would help them get there, right? Absolutely. Kuman is, uh, is an individualized math and reading center, uh, reading, uh, re reading center, and uh, it helps them with their enrichment as well as remedial, yes. So I want to talk about uh, Kuman is a learning center, and there's also tutorial. What's the difference between a tutoring and a learning center? What's the, the key? Well, tutoring um, is more dependent based so you have a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two so you're dependent on that tutor whereas Kumon it teaches you to to learn on your own to, mm. we are teaching the children to teach themselves so it creates independent and uh, by that they learn they have value in what they've learned so there's there's two levels to look at this I would think one is enrichment where your uh, where your child is already to a level and you're trying to take your child to the next level or you believe that he or she is is gifted and it's 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 a push beyond what you as a parent can do and, and the other one would be remedial where your child isn't quite getting it as best as he or she could either from their own uh, uh, fault or the teacher's fault. Uh, how, how do you deal with those two things? Well, Kumon will help both of those individuals. Uh, we, do, we do an assessment when, they, when the children come in. We give them, a, we observe how they're doing, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. And depending on that, we develop levels for them. And because it's individualized, um, if they're enrichment and they're doing really well in school, uh, that teacher is restricted to give them that grade, only that grade level. They can't give them anything above their grade level. When they attend Kumon, the ceiling, there is no ceiling. It's the sky's the limit. So if they feel like doing a, a grade above their grade, uh, current grade level or a year or two above, they're welcome to do so. It's all individualized. It, it, it's interesting when, uh, whenever you've been involved with the children, I, I mean, I was a hockey coach, I was a, a, a cub master. They, uh, they believe that their child is the best, always the best. How do you deal with a parent who walks in with a child with their like their, their expectation is their child is gifted and you have to give them the reality check. 
<laughs> well, it's it's actually um, it's good because they actually see that. And when I do the assessment, the results are right there. It's black and white. Um, you know, like they said, the proof is in the pudding, right? And you, we talk to the child, we talk to the parents, and it's it's actually a, a team effort. And then they actually realize what the truth is. Mm -hmm. What would you say the ratio is between uh, en enrichment and, uh, how would you say, um, a remedial? Like the, between someone who needs to go to a learning center or who wants to go and wants to go higher? It's basically 50-50. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a, a unbalanced scale in that mm -hmm. respect. There are children that really are challenged uh, and, and want to go above their grade level and they're enthusiastic about it. And, and then there are children who, you know, unfortunately, they're not up to par. And, uh, and, and when they're in the school system, you, you know that they feel a little bit of anxiety being there. They're not uh, at the same level as their peers. And uh, when we do the assessment and they, I say, okay, listen, we're going to do this worksheet or we're going to do this type of work, they feel really, really confident about it and they feel happy that that's the work that they can do. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that um, has been a, a consistent complaint is math. I mean, now with the advent of the computer, we have spell checks. Spelling isn't as spelling doesn't count. They're stopping cursive writing. There's no mental math. How do those characteristics uh, play into what your program does? Well, and that's why there is this need for Kumon or uh, a learning center like Kumon because there is no mental math. The, the, the basic fund fun, uh, fundamentals of mental math or basic reading comprehension or spelling tests, they're, they're not there in the school system anymore. They're giving calculators in grade three. Uh, uh, they don't, there's no spelling tests. So with, uh, with this basic need or basic fundamentals uh, in Kumon, the children are, it helps them with their other studies in school as well. We, we have an advent of technology where kids uh, prefer to spend more time downstairs going like this all the time or going like this all the time. How do we take them away from that and motivate them to, to enjoy learning? Well, basically, because it's such an individualized program, there's no stress created, oh, it's too hard or it's too easy. It's just right. And when you are, and Kumon is more of a habit forming uh, yeah. uh, curriculum. So it's something like you do every day. You, you, go, you, go, you have breakfast every day. So you want to do Kumon every day. So once that consistency is, is built in, it's just automatic. So is it a class format? Is it uh, multiple students with one teacher? How, how, does, how does the configuration work? Well, so the Kumon program is uh, of as early as two and a half years of age, preschool up to grade 12 math. Mm -hmm. The aim is for high school math and reading. So the earlier you start, the, the, the better. Start. It, so Aman, I want to give you a second to tell the folks at home how they can get in touch with you. How, how can they get in touch with Kumon? Uh, you can uh, get in touch with us at bramptonfocus.ca slash Kumon. And, and are our classes filling up? I mean, I mean, yes. yeah, I mean, it happens. If you were to, with about 30 seconds, I always have to ask this question. What, what is the thing that kids are lacking the most now that you see a reoccurring problem? You know, it's the mental math. Mental math, basic yeah. Basic reading skills, yes. Mental math. Well, listen, I want to, Effet Aman, I want to thank you so much for being here and uh, representing Kuman Math and Reading. That's uh, really cool. I thank you very much. Well, thank you for having me. And we want to thank uh, our constable who is with us as well as uh, Michelle Vivian and, uh, of course, uh, Janetta Brown, who was uh, the beautiful young fusion lady, and Angela Dutois. My name is Michael A. Charbon. You're watching Brampton Focus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.